In a previous video, we gave a definition for continuity at a point. In this video, we'll discuss continuity on an interval and continuous functions. We say that a function f of x is continuous on the open interval bc if f of x is continuous at every point in that interval. For x to be continuous on a closed interval bc, we require it to be continuous on every point in the interior of bc, but we just require it to be continuous from the right at b and from the left at c. We can also talk about f being continuous on half open intervals. For example, on the half open interval bc, which is open at b and closed at c, or the other way around, or the half open interval from b to infinity, and so on. In all of these cases, we require f to be continuous on the interior of the interval and left or right continuous on the closed endpoints of the interval as appropriate. So on what intervals is this function g of x continuous? Well, it's continuous on this part. The arrows indicate it keeps on going, so I'd say it's continuous from negative infinity to negative 1, not including the endpoint negative 1. It's also continuous here, and we can include the endpoint this time. So this is from negative 1 to 1, and then again on this last section. We can't include 1. It's not continuous there. It's not even defined there. So what kinds of functions are continuous? What kinds of functions are continuous everywhere? And by everywhere, I mean on the entire real line, negative infinity, infinity. Well, polynomials are a great example. Also, sine x and cosine x. The absolute value of x is another common example. There are certainly many other functions that are continuous on the whole real line. I'll let you see if you can come up with some more examples. Now, if we ask the second question, what kinds of functions are continuous on their domains, we get a lot more answers. Not only polynomials, but also all rational functions. Things like f of x equals 5x minus 2 over x minus 3 squared times x plus 4 is a good example of a rational function. Even though it's not continuous everywhere, because it's not continuous when x equals 3 or negative 4, it is continuous on its whole domain because 3 and 4 are not in the domain of this rational function. In addition, all trig functions, inverse trig functions, log and e to the x functions, and pretty much all the functions we normally encounter are continuous on their domains, although their domains are not necessarily the whole real line. For example, for a natural log of x, the domain is just 0, infinity, and that's where the function is continuous. In addition, the sums, differences, products, and quotients of continuous functions are continuous on their domains. So, for example, y equals sine of x plus the natural log of x is continuous where it's defined. The compositions of continuous functions are continuous on their domains. So, for example, the function y equals ln of sine of x is continuous where defined. It turns out to be a bunch of disjoint intervals where sine is positive. Since continuity is defined in terms of limits, it's sometimes possible to use our knowledge of which functions are continuous to calculate limits. For example, if we want to find the limit as x goes to 0 of cosine of x, because cosine is continuous, we can evaluate this limit just by plugging in 0 for x, and cosine of 0 is 1. We're using the definition of continuity here to say that the limit of the function is equal to the value of the function. The second example is a little trickier because the function inside is not continuous at x equals 2. In fact, it's not defined at x equals 2. But as x approaches 2, x squared minus 4 over 2x minus 4 times pi can be rewritten as x plus 2 times x minus 2 over 2 times x minus 2 times pi, which is the same thing as 
x plus 2 over 2 pi for x not equal to 2. So as x approaches 2, this expression here approaches 2 plus 2 over 2 times pi, which is just 2 pi. In other words, the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared minus 4 over 2x minus 4 pi is just 2 pi, and therefore the limit as x goes to 2 of cosine of this expression is just cosine of 2 pi, which is again equal to 1. We're using here the fact that cosine is continuous and a property of continuous functions, which says that the limit as x goes to a of f of g of x is equal to f of the limit as x goes to a of g of x if f is a continuous function. In other words, for continuous functions, you can pass the limit inside the function. That's all for continuity on intervals and continuous functions.